Creole International Magazine, separated by water but united by culture, presents Creole Architecture Guyana, South America, Georgetown's Heritage Trail. The National Library was constructed in 1909. Originally known as the Public Free Library, this building once housed the economic, science, anthropological and historical sections of the museum after the destruction of the Royal Agricultural and Commercial Society in 1945. In 1951, the museum was relocated to its present site and the library took over the entire building. The Bank of Guyana was officially opened on 11 October 1966 by Governor General Sir Richard Late. It was constructed on the site of the assembly rooms, which was destroyed by fire in 1945. Designed by Watkins and Partners, Ariba, A R I B A, it houses the Guyana Central Bank and once housed the Secretariat of the Caribbean Commonwealth Community. Guyana Stores Limited, formerly Universal Stores, was opened on 27 November 1950. Regarded as the showpiece of business and the business community, this imposing concrete structure built by John Molin contractors was erected on the site of the Booker's Drug Company and Booker's Garage which was destroyed by fire in 1945. The Republic Arch, made of aluminium, was erected in honor of the renaming of High Street, the Avenue of the Republic, in 1970. The Nonaligned Monument was built to commemorate the 1972 Conference of Foreign Ministers of Nonaligned Countries, which was held in Guyana from the 8th to the 11th of August in 1972. This monument was unveiled by His Excellency Arthur Chang, the first president of Guyana. The Hand in Hand Company Insurance Limited was constructed at a cost of $37,700. This low building with its decorative cast iron arches and railings reminiscent of the architecture of the Victorian and Georgian eras was constructed during 1878 to 1879. This building once housed the Georgetown Municipality in 1879 and the Council of the United States of America from 1920s to 1930s. The Demerara Mutual Life Assurance Building, this graceful timber structure was once the residence of Sir Eustace Wolford, a Speaker of the Legislature. On 17 September 1891, this organization was established by several script holders of the Hand in Hand Fire Company. Central Garage Building This imposing wooden structure with its high walled facade was originally constructed with an indoor garden. Today, this building presently houses the representatives for Mercedes-Benz in Guyana. The City Hall, regarded as the most elegant building of Georgetown, was designed by Father Ignatius Scholes. It was officially opened on the 1st of July, 1889, by Governor Lord Gormanston. Moving along, just to the side of City Hall, you'll find the City Engineer's Department. This quaint wooden structure, with its ornate cast iron railings, was constructed in the 19th century. It once housed the Fire Superintendent's Department 
and it was also the residence of the town's superintendent. The High Court, originally the Victoria Law Courts, was opened on 24th May 1887. This building was designed by Mr. Hutchins, with titular assistance by a Dutch hydraulics engineer, Baron Hora Sikoma and Caesar Castellani. This L-shaped structure is designed with elements Elizabethan and Tudor style on the upper floors with its structural timbers expressed externally. The Stabrook Market covers an area of 76,728 square feet. Designed and erected by an American engineer, Nathaniel McKay, this structure bears the former name of the city of Georgetown. On the 1st of November 1881, this market was officially opened by Governor Cornelius H. Courtright. Parliament Buildings Parliament Buildings was designed by Joseph Hatfield. This brick structure was constructed from 1829 to 1834. It rests on foundation of Greenheart logs. It is a model of 19th century architecture and is one of two domed buildings in the city of Georgetown. Today, this building is home to the National Assembly. St. Andrew's Kirk is the oldest church in Georgetown. On 12th August 1811, it was established by the Dutch. However, due to financial problems, the church was sold to the Scottish members of the congregation in 1813. Under their administration, the church expanded and enslaved Africans were baptized and allowed to worship in the sanctuary of this church. The Georgetown Magistrates Court was built as an annex of the High Court. This building, designed by Caesar Castellani, was officially opened on the 1st of September, 1891. Ornate wrought iron rails and stairs are noteworthy features of this building. St. Stanislaus College was founded on the 1st of May, 1866. In the early years, the school was known as St. Stanislaus Grammar School and occupied various sites. In 1907, the name was changed to St. Stanislaus College when the present Brick Dam site was acquired. The Chinese Association was founded in 1920 to allow for Chinese in Guyana to have a place for social interaction and to promote their development. The billiards room and indigent quarters were located on the first floor and the visitors' dormitories, third and fourth floors. In July 1882, a fire destroyed three stories of this building. The hall and upper story were rebuilt and the building was formally opened on Sunday 12th of August 1884. The Brickdown Police Station was designed by Caesar Castellani. In 1839, an ordinance was passed legislating the police force and the erection of a station house, a watch house where a police would be present day and night. The Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception was designed by an Englishman, Mr. Leonard Stokes. It was constructed over a period of 10 years, 1921 to 1931, to replace the St. Mary's Chapel, which was destroyed by fire in 1913. Though incomplete, the cathedral was opened and blessed by Bishop Galton S.J. on 13th of March, 1921. The entire cathedral was opened on 8th of December, 1925. Smith's Congregational Church was named after Reverend John Smith, who was imprisoned because it was alleged that he had incited slaves to revolt in 1823. He died of pneumonia in prison while awaiting his reprieve. This church was erected as a suitable mark of respect to the memory of this much-injured minister of Christ and as indicating their full conviction of his entire innocence of the crimes laid to his charge.